Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us today on the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Our guest in studio is returning to talk with us, Dr. Ara DeCranian, a senior rheumatologist, San Diego Arthritis Medical Clinic, and also uh, has been with SDAMC for, uh, well, several years, since 2004. Uh, he's affectionately known to his patients as Dr. D. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. DeCranian. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate that. Um, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, how does rheumatoid arthritis differ from other types of arthritis and I've most of us have only heard of a couple of types rheumatoid and maybe, maybe osteo talk about rheumatoid arthritis as it differs from the others yeah that's exactly right Neil so uh, those of us who manage patients with arthritis uh, on, on a regular basis know that there are about a hundred different types of arthritis and you're absolutely right in that the most common type which most people will be familiar with is known as osteoarthritis which is a, a degenerative process that uh, sort of progresses as we get older mm -hmm. um, as compared to rheumatoid arthritis though it is a, um, a manifestation of inflammation uh, in the joints um, it's really a systemic autoimmune disease where the primary problem is, is in the immune system. And the uh, effects of that are really to cause pain and swelling and stiffness uh, in, in, in a systemic fashion in most joints of the body. So the two uh, prototypical types of arthritis are treated very differently, one with uh, physical therapy and mechanical factors as well as pain medications and the other with medications that work on the immune system in the case of RA. Now, in the case of RA, if someone's immune system has been compromised from some other uh, problem, are they more a candidate to develop RA, or is that something that um, happens just because? Yeah, so rheumatoid arthritis is uh, really based on a combination of genetic factors that uh, that predisposes a, a particular person to um, to rheumatoid arthritis. Um, however, there's a, a, a sort of a second hit, an environmental or some other type of insult that really uh, puts the, that predisposed patient uh, over the threshold for developing rheumatoid arthritis. Now, uh, research over the last um, many decades has tried to identify what uh, what that initiating factor might be, uh, and as as of yet, we, we don't really have an answer. Uh, people have looked at infections, people have looked at uh, environmental exposures, and really there haven't been any firm answers. But we do understand uh, the disease, once it's manifest, is really based on a combination of genetic and environmental factors that once set in, it sort of propagates and it develops into this full-blown rheumatoid arthritis that most people will be familiar with. Now, there was recently conducted a, 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 an online survey in 15 countries by Harris Poll on behalf of Pfizer. Now, this, this survey took place between uh, September uh, of 2014 through January of this year, involving almost 4,000 people above the age of, of 18 who've been diagnosed with RA. Talk about this survey. Why was it conducted and what were some of the key findings that are, that's moving RA management forward? Yeah, that's exactly right. So the, the survey known as the RA narrative, uh, which has been sponsored by Pfizer and has really brought together, uh, the, the, the group of, uh, people who are intimately involved in managing rheumatoid arthritis and specifically, obviously, the patients, uh, as well as their healthcare providers and patient advocacy groups, uh, to help support the endeavor on how to live with rheumatoid arthritis. And what we've noticed uh, over the past decade or so is that despite the advances in treatment that we've seen uh, with, uh, with managing rheumatoid arthritis, there still remain gaps uh, in terms of either under-treatment um, uh, of patients or uh, in those who have access to treatment, uh, perhaps um, settling for uh, a, a disease or a treatment plan that may not necessarily be optimal or may not necessarily be um, well appreciated by the patient. So this platform of the RA narrative is really to get all these key players talking with each other so that we're on the same page, so that physicians understand where patients are coming from and patients understand why physicians may be recommending certain things that may not necessarily make sense for them. Uh, so the, uh, the, the key findings uh, of, of the survey have really highlighted some of these uh, deficiencies and, and gaps when it comes to optimally managing patients with mm -hmm. RA. Uh, optimal management. When we go to the, to the doctor or you know, our health care provider and we're asked those questions um, 
uh, how do you feel today? Um, is there anything that has changed since the last time? Uh, those sorts of questions that seem to be asked at every visit to, to determine where you are today. When a patient is demonstrates that they feel uh, uncomfortable, what is it that the physician can do in order to get the full story when the patient is saying, you know, I'm okay, I'm good. Um, maybe they look fine. Maybe they're speaking as if they're in no pain, no discomfort whatsoever. Should the physician just take that at face value 100% of the time, or should they 100% of the time not take it at face value based on the fact that the person is feeling uncomfortable because it's a patient physician relationship? Yeah, that's, it's a very good point, Neil, that you bring up and really one of the key findings uh, that identified the difference um, in, in managing RA and, and, and then GAPS uh, really focuses on that. So we know that patients, when they're first diagnosed or early in their disease course, they're quite symptomatic with pain and stiffness and, and a general feeling of fatigue. Um, and once they start whatever treatment they start with, uh, they have a relative improvement that, again, at face value, uh, might be communicated sort of offhandedly as, oh, I'm better or I'm, I'm, I'm well. And unless the physician is astute to sort of really probing the patient as to what they mean um, or, or how they've been perhaps for the days or weeks before the visit, um, we really won't get the full story. So one of the things that the RA narrative identified really is that uh, uh, patients might be settling when it comes to the management of their RA. So two out of three physicians uh, believe that patients uh, with RA say that they feel good enough um, even though their clinical assessments indicated that their disease was still active. And so, again, if unless there's more probing and more questions and, and, um, and further discussion, uh, it just might be that that patient might be uh, left at an inadequately controlled state uh, just based on uh, the offhanded comment of, I'm better or I'm okay. Do you find that um, reaching out to support groups uh, can can help? Because you don't want to, well, I don't, and maybe that's my problem. I don't want to go and just talk to my physician about, you know, how I'm feeling or whether or not the progress that I expected is being realized. I, when I go, I'm, you know, I need a prescription. I need, you know, there's a reason in the mind of the patient, okay? Um, do you think that support groups can be helpful to a, to a patient who wants to just talk rather than, you know, be quote unquote seen? Uh, absolutely. I think that's a very important point as well, Neil, is, is one that uh, e even if there was an appreciation for so the, the, the global management, the more holistic management of the patient, uh, that very often there's a lack of time that prevents us from, from achieving that. So you're right in that the traditional office visit focuses on objective measures, focuses on medications or medication changes and laboratory values, et cetera. Um, however, sometimes the person uh, that's in that patient gets lost uh, so that the social impact, the psychological impact of the, of the disease really either goes unrecognized uh, or um, unappreciated in terms of uh, focusing on deficiencies in those areas. So that's an area where um, caretakers, where community uh, resources, where patient advocacy groups really come into play uh, to put patients in touch with each other, to put them in touch with um, allied health professionals, whether they're physical therapists, mental health professionals, et cetera, uh, to really focus on those areas where just a deficiency of time doesn't allow the rheumatologist to focus on. Uh, so that's, uh, I, I think, a big gap that the RA narrative identified is that um, two out of three uh, uh, patients really felt that they could um, see their physicians more often, um, and four out of five uh, healthcare professionals really believe that patients who participate in RA support groups tended to do better, uh, better in terms of uh, being able to live with and manage their rheumatoid arthritis. Now, doctor, as we wrap up, we've been talking about the disconnect identified between the patient and the manager, the healthcare manager of uh, the patient's rheumatoid arthritis. What about communication between those who manage, um, provider to provider? Uh, you've got one provider that's focused on your RA. You may have another provider that's focused on maybe a mental aspect of your health or a dental aspect of your health. Um, what about communication between the healthcare providers 
the RA doctor and some of the other doctors because there are factors that could affect the RA that the RA provider may not be aware of. That's absolutely right, and uh, that's an area for uh, future discussion that the RA narrative has identified in that um, uh, the, the, the typical patient who has rheumatoid arthritis is really seeing multiple healthcare providers with perhaps no one really coordinating the efforts of that. Um, sometimes the assumption is that the primary care physician uh, would do that. Sometimes the rheumatologist might take it upon himself or herself to do that. Um, but there is no consistency. Um, my suspicion is that in the increasing uh, use of electronic health records and integrated systems, these types of communications might be a little bit better, but traditionally they've been fragmented, um, particularly in, in areas where um, patients are jumping from specialist to specialist. Uh, but you're absolutely right in that the impact of the disease on other comorbidities is great. The impact of our treatment of rheumatoid arthritis affects uh, many other disease states that really need to be focused on, whether it's um, uh, metabolic changes, whether it's infection risk, uh, whether it's lifestyle changes, et cetera. Uh, but there clearly is a greater need to coordinate the efforts and better communication um, with the healthcare community in and of itself uh, as it relates to the patient with RA. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, and we've been in studio talking with Dr. Ara DeCranian of San Diego Arthritis Medical Clinic. He's a member of the RA Narrative Advisory Panel, and he's been discussing rheumatoid arthritis and the RA Narrative Patient Survey that was conducted online in 15 countries by Harris Poll on behalf of Pfizer. And the survey has pinpointed some uh, some very crucial factors that identify what physicians can do to better inform their patients about their arthritis and what patients can do to be better empowered to take control of their own uh, health care. It's been great having you here with us today, Dr. DeCranian. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.